there are a few factors that really propel AI to this current state. And this is many people call the third wave, right? The first wave, you know, died because um, you know people probably were too naive. You know, they thought you know they over over sort of uh, you know estimated the future. And at that time, of course, uh, even include the second wave as well. Uh, computing just power wasn't there, and the, and there wasn't even the concept of big data. Right? You know, now um, so when AI evolved maybe about 20 years, some years ago into something called machine learning, where data became the key right, uh, to AI. You know, that was a big advancement. People understood the importance of data. The compute power has become cheap and powerful. The internet happened, mobile happened, and suddenly we had a ton of people collecting data, voice and image data, and trajectory and behavioral data. Deep nets are so expressive, if you don't have a lot of data to pin them down, they actually do worse with a small amount of training. So people turn to other techniques and, you know, so basically it's a confluence of those factors and some improvements on the algorithm, but not all that much really. It's a little bit striking if you're looking at the community from the outside. It looks like AI was just asleep for a long time and then one day it just exploded. Um, if you're actually working on this from the research side, it's actually kind of a very slow ramp up. It's sort of the bottom of that exponential curve that people could see from the inside that this was happening. Um, but for a very long time, the things that we could build with deep learning, which is the technology that's powering a lot of progress right now, the things we could build were just not as good as the hand engineered systems that businesses and companies were actually using. And then what happened around maybe 2012 or so is that these systems hit the sort of crossover point where suddenly the thing that we could build with this deep learning technology became much, much more powerful and really overtook all the systems we could build before. And it sort of looked like a big surprise, uh, like it came out of nowhere. Uh, and it's actually been a very long process that you're just seeing the, the output of it right now. Machine learning has come up as a huge enabler, but at the same time, I think now we are in a position where we have enough empirical data to support our research, enough compute power to essentially take it to the next level. And I think that is an exciting phase now where deep learning is becoming enabler of what we have always thought of cognitive systems or AI in general to achieve. And I think that brought us one step closer to going towards what we like to think as AI. Again, in terms of the things that we are doing now, we are, still solving very basic problems. We are not really solving very complicated problems, except that all these basic problems are becoming building blocks of achieving something much bigger.